scale at which GPUs can, can do rigid bodies. For those of you that don't know, this has been one of the most vexing GPU compute problems uh, of all time. We've been trying to, we've been working on GPU rigid bodies since since we invented CUDA, and it's taken us three three different attempts to finally get to a solution that that we feel is is uh, is a, is one that will work in real games and real in real environment. The previous solutions had had various issues. They had limitations like you couldn't have all of the features of PhysX, joints and the other things that are expected from PhysX. The other big problem was that the CPU algorithm was not exactly the same as the GPU one. So the behavior was different and you'd have to author your physics differently for a CPU based algorithm versus GPU. But with our new algorithm, uh, they, they fundamentally match, so we can even switch between CPU and GPU uh, based on what the workload is. Yeah, even the bulldozer physics is being done on GPU here. And I think uh, the, the treads and stuff are all physical. All right, you, all of you are welcome to play with these demos. We're gonna have them set up on the side over here. Uh, go have fun, and we'll be releasing these as well uh, to the public. As close to cinematic quality as possible. One of the uh, original, original things we noticed when we started including fluid dynamics technologies in games is that we just couldn't get enough resolution. Flow is a grid-based solver, which means um, we, we essentially have voxels that we do the simulation in for where the fluid is placed. In previous techniques, you would have one big bounding box that all your fluid was in, and you'd have a fixed resolution. Uh, for that bounding box. But with Flow, uh, we leverage DX12 to, to allocate and distribute our memory and computation to the regions of interest. Empty space that doesn't have any volume, any fluid inside it, uh, isn't, we don't waste any computation there, and we don't waste memory there, which allows us to effectively increase the resolution greatly and get closer to film level quality. Uh, we've got some demos of this. Uh, I encourage you guys to play with it. It's a whole lot of fun. I'd also like to talk about one, one other feature we added here, which brings it a lot closer to film quality. Uh, if you notice in this plume over here, you can actually see the volume shadowing itself. Uh, and if we, if we reduce it, yeah, that's how it used to look before there was self-shadowing. But for volumetric rendering, it's really critical to have uh, to have the volume shadow itself. That's how you see all of the features uh, and detail that, that, that's in there. It's a natural effect. Uh, can you also, I think there's the pan and tilt, the light pan and tilt. If you move it around, you can kind of see a dot ray effect. Something in there. This is really cool. I mean, I've been working on uh, volume rendering and fluid dynamics for 20 years or so. Uh, before NVIDIA, I was I came from the film industry where I wrote a render specific specifically for this stuff. It was used in an old movie called Reign of Fire, which was one of the first ones that had fire uh, by Disney. And I I didn't believe that we'd be able to do this real time even at this point. That was about 15 years ago, around the time I started at NVIDIA. So we're we're really close to to getting film quality in real time. This is um, fast, fast approaching that. 